worship room, let's prepare our hearts to worship and give glory to our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us be able to glorify the Father and give him all praise and thanks today as we prepare our hearts to worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. And the Bible says in the first book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 11, it says, For no one can lay any foundation other than understand as we prepare our hearts to worship him who is holy Jesus wants to know if you would wait if we would wait on him Jesus wants to know if we would wait on him if he does not do things as fast as we want him to do would we wait on him if our body or a disability temporarily in our bodies think about it for a moment just close your eyes as we worship him so that your focus is not me your focus is not about what is he about to say I love the Holy Spirit to speak to you even as I minister in this moment I love the Holy Spirit to minister in this time Will we wait, will you wait on him in your troubled seasons? If we are to know that he is the God of what? I serve a God of all possibilities. All things are possible, not some things. I always tell the Father, Lord, even when I ask something, if it is not given to me, I know you have because I have come to understand from the very beginning which you reveal to me as to who you are and who I am through you. I've come to an understanding to know not just my identity but to know the very plans and purposes that God has for me and I tell you no matter where you are right now. The very plans and purposes that he has in store for you is far greater than any plans you make on this earth or anything else that is being planned on your behalf by anyone else on this earth. And when I declare saying that he is the God of all possibilities, I tell you, he is the Lord over my life, who is able to make all my disabilities fade away. For through him, I tell you that we are able. 
So as we prepare our hearts to worship him, let's do this every day. Just say, as we watch and as we walk through every season in the waiting, catch what it is to know that if you watch for Jesus, if you walk with Jesus and wait on Jesus, Jesus will work it out for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing to know that we serve a God of all possibilities? He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And in Him, He's all that I need. Let's just soak in the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning. And no matter what time zone that you are in, even if it's in the evening, let's just rejoice. Surrender this time. Don't be in a rush. Oh, we give it all to you. Abba Father, you are all that I need, you are all that I need, every breath that I take, I give you the glory. the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Holy, holy are you Lord God Almighty. Worthy is the Lamb. the Lord God Almighty reigns. 
the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Majesty, I can't bow. I lay my all before you now. In royal robes, I don't deserve. I live to serve you, Majesty. Majesty, I can't but bow. I lay my all before you now. In royal robes, I don't deserve. I live to serve your man.
Jesus at the center of it all From beginning to the end It will always be Always be you Center of it all, Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, always be you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you. Only you. Jesus be the center of my life From beginning to the end It will always be, always be you, Jesus My Jesus Jesus be the center of my life Jesus be the center of my life From beginning to the end It will always be, always be you Jesus, Jesus Nothing else matters Nothing in this world will do Jesus will be the center Everything revolves around you so Jesus will be the center Oh, we give you all the glory Jesus be the center Everything revolves around you Only you From my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center It's all about you Yes, it's all about you my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the sound, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the sound, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart to be the sand it's all about you yes it's all about sing it out from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the sand it's all about you it's all about you from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the sand it's all about you, it's all about you.
your church. Yes, Lord. Jesus, be the center of your church. And every knee will bow. And every tongue shall confess you. Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church. From beginning to the end, it will always be, always be you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, my Jesus, yes, Yes, it's all about you. Jesus, the center of it all. It doesn't matter if you're saying sorry for your life. Jesus, be the center of it all. Yes, Father, in our own. From beginning to the end. Always be you, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Lord, Lord our God. Oh Lord, oh Lord our God. Oh Lord, oh Lord our God. Yes, Lord. time I come before the Lord and even when I'm doing everything else unto him I always tell the Father Lord help me never to seek a crown help me, help me never to seek fame help me never to seek recognition empty Father empty me completely so you could fill me fill me up so I can overflow for your glory. I want to overflow for you. I want to overflow for you. I want to overflow for you. To fulfill everything you have. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. is all I see for when your eyes are wrong this child your grace abounds in me oh Lord you're beautiful your face 
is giving glory to you. Oh Lord, please light fire. Hearts burn bright and clear. Replace the land of my first love that burns with holy fear. I want to take your word and shine it all around. But first help me just to live it, Lord. And when I'm doing well, help me to never seek a crown for my reward is giving glory to you. Oh, Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I seek. For when your eyes are round this child, your grace Bounds to me. I want to take your word and shine it all around. But first, tell me just to live it, Lord. And when I am doing well, me to never see the crown for my reward is giving glory. Sing it down, cause I want to take your word and shine it all around. But first help me just to live it, Lord. And when I am doing well, help me to never seek the crown for my reward. Is giving glory to you. Oh Lord, please light the fire. Once, but bright and clear. Replace the land of my first love. Burns with holy fear. The burns with holy fear. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is on. Have your way in us, so Holy Spirit. We surrender to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Shalom and God bless you. It's a blessed, blessed day and I want to warmly welcome you to the worship room. I'm Angelo and it's a blessed day. It's been a it's been an amazing uh, time as we were worshiping the Father. And I just want to be able to encourage you in this time uh, to be able to give God all glory and honor and praise. At the start, it uh, started a bit edgy because, as I always say, technology, yes, we use it all the time, but technology can always fail. Even though it is, uh, uh, it is a good tool, our dependency should never be on our technology. Because I tell you, when we started, there was so much that happened that the live stream crashed. And when the live stream crashed, and I always encourage others, you know, when things like this happen, let our eyes not be horizontal, let our eyes be always vertical. Uh, so for those that are just joining in as well after the worship, don't worry, because our hearts should always be in a posture of worship. It's not just a segment, but understanding that our constant service is for the glory of our Lord and to be able to serve one another to be able to give God all glory through that joy that's in our hearts. So when we started, even when the live stream crashed, the Lord was just harming my heart as always, and I always depend only on Him, not the technology. Immediately, the Holy Spirit just allowed me to disconnect, send a message out and reconnect. And upon that, all of a sudden, things started to <laughs> break around me. Even my in-ear monitors, for some reason, just fell and they broke into pieces so i'm just going on one year right now and i i couldn't worship at the time because i'm not dependent on these things but it just broke into pieces and i just immediately i just immediately just took it off and i suddenly put these big headphones on because i needed to hear the sound but i always tell people you know even that if i have to just take it off connect off the keyboards or the instruments we are an instrument of praise so I want to always tell you, do not worry. Don't think that your singing in a particular key is going to glorify the Lord. No. God is enthroned on the praises of his people. He's enthroned when we praise him beyond the songs, beyond the familiarity of lyrics. We're not performing for one another. We're not entertaining one another, even if it's some of, our, some of our fields of work, whether you're a musician, a singer, it doesn't matter what you are. But when you do it for the glory of God, it is amazing. So I just put those on and, you know, I had to keep doing many, many things and the headphones were falling off the head. But I just surrendered. And I want to encourage you today to surrender your hearts because as we go into this time of worshiping the Father, I want to encourage and tell you that God is glorified on the praises of his people. And we're going to go into God's word today because what the Holy Spirit has been putting into my heart this whole week through the seasons, but this whole week was to understand the finished work on the cross. It is finished. That's the final statement that Jesus spoke on the cross. See, Jesus before, Jesus, before he breathed his last breath, Jesus uttered the phrase, it is finished. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. In the book of John, we will start to read. I want you to keep the word of the Lord handy before it even appears on the screen. But John, the book of John, chapter 19, we'll refer into, says in verses 28 through 30, the phrase is actually a translation from the word tetelestai, tetelestai, which is all of it, to say it is finished. Hallelujah. Let's look go into God's word. Hallelujah. So that word is tetelestai. But in John 19, verse 28, the 30 says later knowing that everything had now been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled Jesus said I am thirsty verse 29 goes on to say a jar of wine vinegar vinegar was there so they soaked whatever it may have been that would have been a spear of some sort the Roman soldier immersed it in put the sponge on a stalk 
of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. In verse 30, it goes on to say, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. See, Jesus, I want to encourage you to say that Jesus had faith, faith unlike any other. He believed that if he died in your place, yours and mine, in our place, that we could be justified by God who could then show that he is both just and the justifier of the one that puts their faith in Christ Jesus. Jesus believed that. Jesus believed this. He had faith for that for the 33 years of his life on this earth. Jesus walked and lived on this earth. He had faith in that. He had faith for that very fact. See, Jesus knew that when, <laughs> when he stands in the middle, becomes a living sacrifice, he takes the blows from the people that verily walked with him, he takes our guilt, he takes our shame upon himself. But if Jesus, I want you to catch this, he took upon all those things. But if Jesus passed the cross, if Jesus passed the cross and not done the work of the cross, you and I, we'd all be dead. Good as dead, but I will say you will be dead. We'll be dead. Catch this. I want you to understand this. It wasn't just Jesus' faith that saved us, but it was Jesus' work that saved us. For when he said it is finished, that work, the finished work on the cross, to his final breath, to when he said it is finished. Therefore, when you are, you're working out your salvation, and it is not you trying to earn something that you can boast about later, but it is the fruit and the result of you knowing beyond the shadow of a doubt that you have been made right with God by the finished work of Jesus. You have been called, understand, you have been called by whom? Who is your identity in? If you are a believer in Christ Jesus, it is only in him. He knows your name. He knows your every thought. He heard you when you called him through it all, through all those tears. So understand when you come to an understanding of learning to let go of the former you, learning to let go of all that has been holding you back, that has been stopping you from fulfilling your God-given destiny, not that of what others have said, what you were to be or called to be, for your identity for was never in anyone else. I encourage you when I tell this to you, I'm sure you know it by now, but if you didn't, I encourage you and tell you, when you come to an understanding that and step out by faith, so when you start to say goodbye, say au revoir to the former you, so long farewell and say hello to the brand new you, that is your confidence that you are saved. That is your confidence that you are saved. Understand that. Hallelujah. See, understand you did not become saved just by becoming a Christian. You need to understand that. Hallelujah. Let me share this insight with you today, which I thank God I clung, <laughs> clung on to when I received it, and I share it constantly with the guidance of nothing but the Holy Spirit. And the boldness that I do as always, standing in the gap, always trusting my Heavenly Father is doing something in this moment. So that once I share this, you will hopefully embark on a journey to focus on God's Word. Rely on it daily. Trust in Him at all times. And keep your eyes on Jesus every second. Every second of every day. 
to live with a passion for his name beyond songs. Sometimes we are caught up with lyrics that we are familiar with in songs and we love to sing it. But in reality, do we even understand the root, the depth of what we are saying? Because out of the abundance of that art, the Bible says, but forget the Bible saying, don't forget the Bible, but understand it. We are so familiar sometimes. But out of the abundance of what we speak from our hearts, because what we put in comes out at some point. Every day, understand that we'll have a passion for his name. Every day of my life to be able to talk about Jesus is a very normal for me because for me, through it all, I sometimes say, Lord, even if I have to be boring, even if I have to look ridiculous to society, to choose you every day would be a norm for me because he is my very center. And I'm never ashamed of the fact and it's where my identity rests. Always has. Hallelujah. 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 See, today I just want to be able to share with you in this short message, even as we spend time in worship. I'm not focused about the time and I hope you would not be as well. Don't be doing this and saying, oh, you know, I want to switch off because I've got something else to watch. I encourage you in this time. I love the Holy Spirit to minister to you in this time. I'm but just a vessel clinging on to what the Lord has told me. Because today, I just want to be able to share with you what the Lord has been putting into my heart in this season, through this journey. But it's something we have always heard, but not paid much attention to. We are familiar with this and I tell you you'll be like I've heard this before see there was a man who lived 2000 plus years ago and his name was Jesus but in an indirect way or an indirect way I share this with you to show how people's lives truly did transform once they came into encounter with Jesus starting with the life of Paul who I'm sure, if you've read the Bible, you know. Paul, who was once at one time known as Saul, who used to persecute people, which we are familiar even when we look at modern news or modern day-to-day -day life, we see about persecution happening. But here was an actual man who lived at that time who was persecuting. Understand, he was persecuting believers understanding that there was a there was there was Simon or Shimon Shimon who was known later as Peter the Jewish fisherman called by Jesus understand he was known as Kepa or Cephas or rock hence Peter as we call it in English or Petros which is in Greek Jacob became Israel later. But through these changes, what Jesus was always trying to show is that God loved all of his children to this day. To this day, beyond the names, God loves all of his children. And through the transformations, he was reminding his children to come back to their first love. To God, see for God, we know, the Bible says, and we really know it if you've connected with him, for God loves this world so much, he does not want some to perish, a few, no, any, none, no one to perish. Let's look at John 3.16, John chapter 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. But many today are falling like dominoes due to the lack of what Jesus truly has taught and mentioned in his word by leaning and learning to depend solely on his word through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But today many are dependent on others, thus relying on, their trust on others to do the works on their behalf. 
dust falling into the trap. You can never do that. You cannot. You can partner, you can partner and pray and walk that journey, but you cannot. You cannot. Your dependency was constantly supposed to be on Jesus. Hence, I always tell people when the Lord got me to share this a few weeks ago, as part of the body of Christ, when Jesus called, not just the disciples back in the day, but when Jesus told, if you want to follow me, leave it all and come behind me. Come follow me. Understand that as disciples, we are followers of Christ, not the body of Christ. So I tell the body of Christ, we are not to follow one another, but follow after Jesus. Follow, keeping our eyes on God, on Jesus. See, for me, throughout my life, I've had a passion for people to see them come to know Jesus as much as I did. When I came to know him all those years ago, when I walked into buildings, it was before the buildings, before places that God found me. When God called me, when I heard his voice, Many come into places to find Christ, but God is always speaking. That's why I always tell, the audible voice of God didn't suddenly vanish into thin air. God's been speaking from generation to generation. God has been speaking. That's why I always remind you through every message to say, God spoke to Moses, God spoke to Abraham, God spoke to Joshua. God spoke to all these people in the Bible. God spoke and revealed many things that were going to happen to Noah. Instructions were given. Today, the body of Christ cannot hear. Many who are serving, I always tell everyone serving, but many who are passionately serving, I ask them, do you hear the audible voice of God? Oh no, I'm reading the Bible. Do you hear the audible voice of God? How can we hear God's voice when we've got so many things cluttered in our head? We've got this meeting planned, that thing planned. We've got so many things busy scheduled that God has become like a piece of a jigsaw puzzle to fit into instead of being the entirety of it all. That's why for me throughout this life, it's been a passion constantly ever since I came to Christ to be able to share that always because it's not me with a copyright patent to say I shared it, no. The excitement of it all because nothing on this earth have I ever found like finding Christ. Because I see so many people suffering today, not suffering just in sickness or lack of other things, but suffering without knowing their identity. I've had a passion for them constantly to understand that, not to see them suffering. And over the years, all that I've seen is through a compromised gospel. People just reaching out to give materialistic things to think that that would help and keep doing many things to give things which will perish and sometimes even mislead them for the love of things without any value instead of being able to go forth and share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are many other gospels, I'm sure. There's only one gospel, one truth, one word, one Bible, one name above every other name. Actually to invest and spend time in sharing through your life's testimony. We're a living vessel, a living example that each of us as a vessel is a living miraculous testimony for God to use. To actually invest in that as a life testimony of what God has been doing and to be able to share what God is doing through the seasons of your life. What God says in his word and like God did to Moses who struggled with the speech impediment. Did you know that? Moses didn't just speak boldly. He was stuttering. He was stuttering. He couldn't. <laughs> he couldn't. To you he would put the right words in if you would only trust in the Lord. To do that and only make yourselves available instead of thinking that role is. Don't misunderstand me, but many think that that role is for clergy. Brand. 
which was the biggest flaw within the body of Christ that built walls, thus preventing God's word from truly moving in a greater way. You know, every time I share, it's not red light attack mode, but I tell you it's when the Lord puts a word into my heart, true with the word of the Lord, I always tell people, it's like every day spending time with the Lord, the more I spend every day, it's spending it down, penning it down, penning it down, never analyzing, never trying to, because we're living in generations where there's so much of exegesis and all sorts of, all sorts of other names that have cropped up over the years. Even Jesus would be baffled thinking, where in my commission did I tell you to do any of that? You know, see, one fact was that when God sent down Jesus, Jesus did not go from nation to nation to preach and teach, but he stayed in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem. And from there, prior to his departure to heaven, he gave a significant commission to you and I, not just the disciples. Then, because you and I, we are his disciples today. When anyone comes to follow Christ, follow Christ, we are his disciples. His disciple making disciples, going forth sharing his name, no other name, no other brand. He gave a significant commission to us, not just the disciples then, and that was to carry forth what? The gospel of our Lord to the ends of the earth, and in his name, we shall do greater things for his glory, not ours. You know, when I sang that final song, forget the copyrights, because I thank God for that man who sang that song. His name was Keith Green, an evangelist for the glory of God, controversial in many other things, where the pharisaical buildings were concerned. He was so passionate. He shared God's word. And when he sang that, he always said, Lord, please light the fire that once burned bright in me. Oh, Lord, you're so beautiful. And he also mentioned to say, help me to never wear a crown, but to constantly be able to go and declare your word. No certificates to prove. Understand. It's his glory, his kingdom, his name, not ours, his work, not our works. So when I hear people saying it took a lot out of me, it breaks my heart sometimes to get to where I am in ministry. I have worked really hard to get to where I am. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, no. I'm telling you, no. Do apologize for the camera just going all over, but stay focused. Stay focused. It's easy for those kind of things to happen, but stay focused. See, one fact that was when God sent down Jesus, I told you, it was for his glory, the mission to fulfill. Jesus fulfilled the Father's will. I sometimes hear people saying, you know, I've worked really hard to get to where I am. I silently stay in those moments. As I said, being a witness and say, oh Lord, open the eyes of their hearts. Constantly to change their heart, to know that all were called, but sadly the separation was done by those that have constantly deviated from it to focus on the job role rather than servanthood in being readily available to serve, not through things, but through your word in preparing your people across the globe not to, I always tell this, not to slap a brand of Christianity over the forehead, no. We do not have a brand because we do not have religion. That's the first thing when we come to Christ. 
We need to encourage people and tell them so that you can do all you have to do when we come to Christ. Our role through the Great Commission was to lead his people. Again, I tell this very, very carefully. Our role through the Great Commission was to lead his people, not to mislead. See, God's word, the one he carried belongs to him. And he loves all his people and does not want any to perish, none. It's an amazing thing to realize, to understand, to know that he loves. He could love some man laying on a street fallen down to some addiction as much as he loves someone filled with a passion on a mission in serving his kingdom. And he loves you and every other person knowing or who's been forgotten. And his heart goes out to the masses for it says in God's word, it says in God's word, for it's not God's will that any should perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. But that all should come to repentance. Hallelujah. See, the Bible says, Beloved, do not let this one thing escape your notice. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, people. As some understand slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Isn't that amazing? See, today when I actually speak to many within the body of Christ, or who acknowledge that fact <laughs> boldly, sometimes I hear people saying, you know, I'm a designer for Christ. I'm a musician for Yeshua. I'm a banker for the kingdom of heaven. I'm a this and I'm a that for Christ. And the moment you put a dove or a ictus, which is the fish symbol, if you were always wondering what that fish symbol was at the back of a vehicle, understand. Understand. You can Christianize it, I guess, as some say, quite rightfully. See, through the years I've seen disasters, famine, floods, wars, we've all seen it. We've all been part of it. Earthquakes, disaster after disaster happen. We've seen these things. And people sadly running away from the faith or embracing many belief systems to bring happiness and joy into their lives. And one may wonder if it's either God's fault for not answering his will for it in being so? Or was it his will for it to being this way? Or it's someone else's or it's God's fault that the world was not being won. Many are blaming God even for the pandemic. I tell you no. There is no fault in or with God. For I already told you what his Bible, his word says. It's not his will for any to perish. But there is his a little command found in his word. And that command says what? Go ye into all nations and preach the gospel to or unto every creature. And says and make disciples of men, men and women, people. And many like to think that that was for the disciples. That's for the apostles then. It's for those that go to seminary and finally get a license to preach. Instead of being led 
by the Holy Spirit to do greater things that Jesus called and gave that authority to do all instead many to constantly understand love that label many tend to love that label some believe it's for humanitarians and for those who love to bury their troubles in the mission fields let's see what God's Word says in the book of Mark chapter 16 verse 14 to 16 which was part of the Great Commission later as they were eating Jesus appeared to the eleven and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And that also doesn't mean that when we come to accept Christ, get dipped in water and go through that whole thing as a ritual and not truly by a heart and go back. It doesn't, it doesn't work. So the book of Matthew chapter 28 it goes on to say from verse 18 to 20 then Jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey all that who has commanded I meaning Jesus has commanded us and surely I'm with you always, even to the ends of the age. Even to the ends of the age. Hallelujah. Well, let, you, let me tell you one thing. See, the world isn't being won today in the way Christ wanted it to be won because we, the body of Christ, we are not doing it. It's our fault, not God's. This generation of Christians, not a religion, is responsible for this generation of souls on this earth. Not Paul, not Matthew, not Mark, not Luke, not Ruth, not Joshua. No one. They lived their life and God used them. And they documented what happened. And it came through the generation so that we will have it at hand. That we will have it at hand. Understand that. Through the finished work of Christ on the cross. Understand that. But Christ is in us through his Holy Spirit who gave us a command. Through the great commission to do greater things. In whose name? Peter's name? Ruth's name? Paul's name? Joshua's name? I see... Many names, some people compare themselves to all of these people failing to realize their own identity. Oh, you're a David, you're a Joshua. I always tell people when they say that, don't ever say that. If you know your true identity in Christ, you will never allow even someone else to say that over your children. Guard them, protect them, guide them as to what Jesus. It's always about Jesus. The Bible always speaks about Jesus. Those that God used through the Bible spoke about Jesus. Our tongues need to always speak whilst living for Jesus. I never think of myself as a David. Never have when people say those things. It just out exit. I smile. I smile a lot, but that smile... There's something underneath. I'm praying underneath. Because if I were to say what I felt to the face, it would be a bring offense. Because offense, offenders would always take offense. But I always tell people, no, our identity is in Christ. Understand that. Through the Great Commission, we were given a Great Commission to do greater things in His name faithfully to see his will being done and nowhere in the world is the gospel so plentiful than it is now in this generation with so many resources and ways to spread 
the true gospel, the one gospel, the undiluted, uncompromised gospel. For on that day we cannot turn to God and say, O oh Lord, I did not hear your word or did not have access to your word. No. Here's something for you to absorb deeply. You don't have to be called. For you have been called by Jesus. See, God wants you to know, <laughs> to understand this. See, God wants you to understand, to be part of his army. And wants you to take orders from him. And understand in submission, first find out what your heavenly father has to say first through the call he has for you. And if you do not hear anything, know this. Because some people say, I haven't heard. I'm waiting. In the waiting, I'm still waiting. I'm waiting. For them, I, for, for them, I will tell this. You are called to go because Jesus said so. You are called to go because Jesus said so. You know, even as we sang that last song, Oh Lord, You Are Beautiful by Keith Green. I love something that Keith Green shared in what <laughs> they say in the army. He was sharing this in an open, open meeting. He was saying, In the army, always obey the last order you got until you get new orders from command headquarters. Just pick that and I said the last order the last order I got from my Bible was my God was to go out in every opportunity and reach the lost share to them of Jesus and be available to understand that God places in situations to share of his goodness and stand for kingdom truth my goodness and not a day goes by that I live for anything more than this. Because I represent the kingdom of God. He is my only boss. He is the one who I always serve. It is his word that is constantly part of everything that I do. Through the seasons, I've honestly shared to many in the faith who think that being a Christian, sadly, to many that I've spoken to in the faith, that being a Christian means going to church a lot, attending Bible studies. But you, have, you may have heard this before, but going to a church does not make you a Christian. You and I are the church, not the building, not the location. Going to a church doesn't make you a Christian. As much as going to a fast food chain restaurant and then making you a fast meal right then and there. Oh, no. Saying a prayer does not make you a Christian. For every human being in, in religion prays. Even praying to Jesus does not make you a Christian. For Jesus himself said this. Many shall come in that day and say, Lord, Lord. But Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. Understand that. It is a way of life for us. Jesus was not a Christian. But we follow Christ. To be like Christ. Not to be Christ. Having the gift of the Spirit. Or looking like you've got them. Doesn't make you a Christian friend. But Jesus said many shall come in that day. Like many do today. And say Lord, Lord. Did we not cast out demons? Did we not heal the sick? Because understand, when Jesus said you'll do greater things, we were never to boast of ourselves. We were never to allow people to see us doing that. The healing comes from God. The breakthrough comes from God. The every breakthrough, every prayer is answered by what? God. That is why as the body of Christ, I always tell people, be aware, be careful, be humble in what we say, how we do it. For the platforms that we've been given is for God's glory, not ours. The chief guest is always God. No one else. 
No one else. Today, many people will say they're healing the sick, they're doing this, they're filling all sorts of things, raising the dead and all kinds of things. But Jesus said, he will say on that day, just like the Bible says, depart from me. I never knew you. I would never want to witness that. You know what a Christian is? Well, it's not a religion. I want to tell you if you ever thought Christianity was a religion. It's okay. You can learn that. You're, it's not. Because it sure was never during Jesus' time. And he was not a Christian. But a real good definition, a real good definition of who a Christian is. Someone who is passionate. An absolute on fire. I heard this person actually saying a Christian is someone who's go, who goes bananas for Christ. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. For the Lord to do as he and his word commands and to daily in total surrender live for him. For Christianity for many, you know, was many into religion by human beings. Christianity was formed by human beings, the religion, as a religion. Christianity was made into labels by human beings. The very denominations were formed and then separated by one's own laws again by whom? Human beings. So you see how diluted the gospel has become from house to house, which is why I thank God when he met me all those years ago and called me and placed me through the journey to rise and serve, it was nothing but by his grace. Daily I knew I lived and by being a silent witness for Christ, I never labeled myself even when I was within places. But passing through to observe and see but the only label above me has always been Jesus. And the only faith I always have had and encourage you to have on is in Jesus and his word. Being a Christian is someone who loves the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your mind and all his strength. But don't forget the second part. And one who loves himself as much as he loves everyone else. Standing for kingdom truth. For kingdom truth. Not compromising it one bit. And Paul in the Bible shared it even better. That he preferred that others be served even before him. Selflessness. An unquenchable undeniable love that God puts into our hearts from day one that develops over the years was never to be kept within our borders our hemispheres never to be locked up but to rise and carry it forth through his gospel and to go forth and share it see there <laughs> there are those that do not know Jesus the way we do yet they go to the ends of the earth, but sadly many believers want to stay in their comfort zones and serve. See, many will not obey God's call and witness right where they are, and they will see their life through. Don't worry. Don't worry. You can do that. You can do that. See, don't worry. There will always be many who will rather, you know, send all sorts of offerings and checks out there rather than to obey the call and send their bodies as a living sacrifice and not everyone that doesn't go in being is being obedient disobedient i beg your pardon not everyone that doesn't go out there doesn't mean that you're being disobedient but i'm just saying that so many sadly don't they're preventing preventing yourself because you feel that you're not called when Jesus has called you. If you only spend time meditating in his word, reading his word, studying his word, allowing the Holy Spirit to be your guide. See, there are billions of people that are lost who don't know Jesus. 
And us giving things won't change one bit. It won't. Understand, it won't change a thing in their lives. But through God's word and that salvation, they will start constantly understand if we start giving them things and it's only things that they're dependent on. That's the only dependency they will always be. Understand. The biggest facade that prevents the gospel actually being taken out there the way Jesus wanted it to be taken so that they will not depend on us but through God's word and that salvation they will start to depend on God their focus will be on Jesus so even as families they will not struggle they will know who to ask from and they will know whom to turn to rather than turn their eyes upon people listen to this no the Bible said, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full on his wonderful face. And the things of this earth will go strangely dim. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes not to people. No. Serve people for a purpose. But our eyes should not be on people. No. No. Constantly encourage over discouragement. Constantly be able to speak life over death. Constantly be able to be a source of encouragement to people. But our eyes should not be on the people. Our eyes should be on Jesus. So today I invite you to make a decision. Not for anyone else, not for me. But a commitment, a decision between you and Jesus. No matter what has transpired over your life. Whatever has been, no matter even if people around you go with questions, constantly kind of say, you know, okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be <laughs> in this season through this pandemic. How you make a firm stand for kingdom purpose to serve his kingdom will come to pass in and through your life as God has something specific for you. And I invite you to just pray to God, trusting in Jesus' name, being led by his Holy Spirit to say, Father, here I am. Have your way in me, Lord. There are times where I've deviated. There are times where I've been searching and I've been searching and searching for you, searching for you in the wrong places, searching for you through others. Lord, reveal yourself to me. I seek your face. I want to hear your voice as you're constantly speaking. Nullify everything else. Empty me so that you can fill me, Lord. Daily start praying and declaring that way. Pray in your own words. I just want to take a few minutes in this time and just, just worship the Lord and just, just soak in the presence Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. We give you all the glory. We give it all to you. Have a father. Give it all to you. Have your way in us. Jesus, have your way in us. Your 
beautiful Your face is all I see For when your eyes I run this child Your grace abounds to me Oh Lord, please light the fire That once burned bright and clear Replace the lamp of my first love That burns with holy fear I want to take your word and shine it all around. But first help me just to live it, Lord. And when I'm doing well, help me to never seek a crown. For my reward is giving glory. To you, yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I seek. For when your eyes are on this child. Grace abounds to me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Just for a few minutes, close your eyes. I encourage you to just invite the Father. Invite Jesus into your hearts. Even if you've been walking with him all this time, it's never enough. It's never enough. Come out of your comfort zones to stand in the gap to pull heaven down. Through the finished work of the cross by his grace, let's stand to carry forth that truth to those that are around me. For those that have been called to go to the nations, do it. Don't let anything hinder you. Don't let anything stop you. But for others, start from those that are around you. Not through things, not through materialism, but to actually spend time. Speak to them about the testimony of your life. Don't be embarrassed. There is no perfect life situation for you to start talking. But it is through imperfect lives that God always perfected. Every single life that God has mentioned in the Bible were people who came from situations that God transformed them. But if you keep your eyes always on the negativity, if you always keep your eyes on negative words, negative atmospheres, gossip, you will always be sucked into that and fall short of it. But today I encourage you, you are called by Christ and Christ alone. In Christ alone, our hope is found. In Christ alone. In Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, the solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter. 
my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. Here in the love of Christ I stand. Here in the death of Christ I live, bought with the precious blood of Christ. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you all the glory, all the honor and praise, Lord, through it all, through it all, Jesus. You know, even with that song we sang, Oh Lord, you're beautiful. You know, Keith Green, a passionate man who lived on this earth, who was a musician and a singer of God's glory. Hallelujah. He boldly said this once. Lord, I remember that special way. I vowed to serve you when it was brand new. But like Peter, I can't even watch and pray one hour with you. And I bet I could deny you too. But nothing lasts except the grace of God by which I stand in Jesus. I'm sure that my whole life would waste away except for grace by which I'm saved. For it's by God's grace that we are saved, nothing else. No good works you do will be recognized towards your salvation nor by doing any good works for anyone else. By doing any good works for anyone else. But by his grace as you're saved. Go forth and share his word. And give his word to people out there. For that is the greatest gift. We can do. Through the seasons of our lives. And I pray you be safe in this time. Have a blessed week. Even as we go into this season of Christmas. And I pray the Lord strengthen you and prepare you. And may his, grog, may his grace be sufficient. And the Holy Spirit always to be our guide. I encourage you, even as you join today. Focus not on me. But we partner constantly to glorify God. Go forth. Be a testimony for Christ, representing the kingdom of heaven, sharing your life's testimony, but through it, a life will be transformed. Focus and surrender and pray so that God can intervene because the change, the transformation is through God. Change comes from within. Don't try to change others. Go forth and give the word boldly, trusting in the Lord your God. So until we meet again, may his shalom, peace be with you. I'm Angelo from the worship room and as we partner to glorify the Lord, I always tell, it's all about him. It's all for the glory of God. May he be praised. May he be glorified. And until we meet again, God bless you and keep you. Take care. Always.